From Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGaulier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am Joe. I am Caleb. And uh, today, Schweiss, we are yet in another week of uh, vacation. Yeah, from you. It seems, it feels really weird because you're still here, but then again, you're not. As of right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's more of an ethereal vacation, I guess. Yeah, at this point. There you go. Um, where do you think you'll be at this uh, at this point? So we're gonna have this week's episode that we're dead. gonna record in a little bit. Oh, okay, dead, <laughs> dead. And then we're gonna have the one of the Patreon guys, and then this one. So this is like two, almost three weeks. It'll be pretty far along. About halfway, yeah. You'll be getting kind of close to here, won't you? No, maybe here's, Salt Lake. Here's not halfway. Uh, Salt Lake is halfway. Salt Lake uh, Valley. Nice. Yeah. That's not too bad. You gonna find uh, you gonna find some geocaches while you're out. I think I will find some Jew caches. That's yeah, it's our, a little hobby, Joe. That's and I our new hobby, right? Getting really into. Um, As of a month ago. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just a new thing. But. All right. So, you guys, uh, quick plugs before we get started here. UltimaFinalFantasy.com, Facebook.com slash UltimaFinalFantasy. Tweet me at UFF Podcast. Tweet me at Joseph DeGaulier. Support us on Patreon. A buck a month gets you all the episodes a day ish early and uh go. extra content and hell it helps us pay for the show so it's awesome all right and uh you can find uh twice streaming 10 2 yes uh at tw- twitch.tv slash ultima final fantasy um Schweiss today is our spotlight episode part one anyway for nabuo uimatsu yeah, this guy is awesome. We've been we've been wanting to do this one for a long time, but at the same time we've been dreading it because there's so much that uh goes into it, but it's been it's been pretty awesome. I mean, last night we we spent like two and a half hours just going through finding really good tracks to pull. Um we found a bunch of really great remixes, some black mages versions of songs. Um some of them we had to pull from the original source some of those old school NES games there's not really much of a choice no one's remixing that but yeah um so what we tried to do was focus on his career at Square after Square there's um you know there's so much out there that it's like we we can't fit this all into two right. parts it's it's too much so uh you know I think for a lot of people there's going to be tracks that we missed and that's that's for sure we've only picked like one one or two tracks from most of the games that he's pl- worked on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we generally went with what were the biggest ones or what were uh, special to us, but, uh, and, but we know that you guys, of course, like have a lot of, everybody has their favorite Uematsu tracks and they may not necessarily jive with ours. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, we have very different tastes in music from pretty much most people. I'd say there's a, there's a smaller chunk <laughs> of the population that uh, enjoys what we enjoy. So, but but I'd say for the most part, just sit back and enjoy the music. We we try to mix it up a little bit with <clears throat> different types of remixes and all that other stuff. Try let's just get into it. All right, let's. exception of Hironobu Sakaguchi, there really isn't any other name more synonymous with Final Fantasy than that of Nobu Uimatsu, composing either all or part of 12 of the 15 main series Final Fantasy games. Much of the feel and atmosphere, that visceral, unspeakable part of us that sings when we are reminded of a Final Fantasy may be the melodies that Nobu Uimatsu is responsible for. With numerous remixes, live symphonic performances, and the original scores themselves, fans of Final Fantasy have relived their FF adventures through listening to the plethora of material presented by Nobuo Uematsu through their headphones while they do the homework 
clean their homes or drive to work. There is no doubt that without the contribution that Nobuo Uematsu has brought to the series, much of our experiences with these games would be dramatically altered from what they are. Where would Star Wars be if it weren't for John Williams? <laughs> you could ask the same of Uematsu. So guys, like we said before, you're going to be hearing a lot of remixes, um, some of the original tracks in this two-parter for Nobuo Uematsu Spotlight, as well as some concert performances and... Yeah, YouTube links for all of these pieces are going to be provided in the episode descriptions. And we ask that if you do enjoy a particular piece, to consider following that link and supporting the artists by subscribing to their channel. There's some really good ones out there. There's some people that we found, I mean, shit, even for FF13, which isn't Naboo's game, that have had some amazing soundtracks. So it's worth checking out. It's kind of cool. Like, you can go through and actually buy the soundtracks themselves. Uh, not everybody does that. I think people oftentimes listen to these things on like YouTube yeah. all day, which is, of course, where we pulled this stuff from. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I have the track. I have the soundtrack for 13 and for 13 too. And I mean, I, I, do, I like listening to the soundtrack every once in a while. They're, yeah. They're, there's some good stuff on there. No, they're... they're that's not Uematsu, but that's what no, I'm saying. Yeah. So having the actual CD is, is something... Yeah, yeah, special, I think. I think the only one I have is that, uh, I think it's like FF4 or whatever, FF4, FF6. Yeah, the FF4, came in my FF6. collector's thing of whatever. So, all right, let's get into this. Nobuo Uematsu was born on March 21st, 1959 in Kochi, Japan. Inspired by the music of Elton John, he taught himself how to, he taught himself how to play the piano at the age of 12. I will be a piano man. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after graduating from Kanagawa University, Uematsu began writing music for commercials before being hired by Squareco in 1986 to work on video game scores. For 18 years, Uematsu worked at Square, creating over 30 video game and movie soundtracks before separating from Square in 2004 to become an independent contractor. We're going to pay special attention to these years as that's where most of the Final Fantasy meet is at. But first, let's rewind the clock back to this very first game score, co-written with Takashi Uno. This is a piece from Cruise Chaser Blassie called Space.
1986 would end up being a very busy year for rookie Nobuo. The next game he'd work on would be his first that he'd composed entirely on his own called Alpha, although we can't seem to find any tracks for that game. After that, his next game would be the NES classic called King's Night. Here is the theme from that game. December of 1986 would feature his next soundtrack, that for Suisho no Dragon. Here's the intro track for that one. The 3D battles of World Runner would push Square's stereoscopic 3D technology to the limits. And with the music of this game, we would see kind of a side of Naboo that we hadn't seen yet, I would say. You could call it Super Pep, as you'll <laughs> see in this next track. Uh, here is a uh, wonderful cover of the main theme from 3D Battles of World Runner.
another soundtrack uh, was made for a little piece of software called Apple Town Story. And he would follow that up with Mystery Quest, not to be confused with Mystic Quest, which comes later. Here's a taste. exceptions most of the pre-ff games nobuo uematsu worked on have been forgotten uh with the most notable detail about them being that they had soundtracks created by (laughs) uematsu uh nearly forgotten games such as genesis we know because we were looking for shit on these games (laughs) yeah uh genesis an alien 2 game and cleopatra no maho which uh, were next up in line, could probably be seen as pot boilers for what was to come. Uh, quick cash grabs for Square's bending doom, as the legend goes, in 1987. Uh, here's a taste from the 26 out of 40 Famitsu scored Cleopatra game. you but i feel like at least 18 of those 26 points comes from this <laughs> awesome theme that we just barely play for you there you go that one's sweet <laughs> so rad racer would be the next game notable for be notable for being one of the few racing games on the NES. this is a track called grand canyon
So after Rad Racer, uh, one of the first dating simulation oh. games would follow. Have you ever played a dating simulation? You game? know what? I think I had one on my phone. What? <laughs> yeah, like I let my buddy borrow my phone for a day, and he went and he fucking bought this little dating sim. Was this game. Caleb Craig? No, it wasn't. Oh, it was Craig. Zach, Cody's brother. Oh, <laughs> just go ahead and name him. <laughs> I was so mad though. I was like, dude. And then I finally just got into the game, and I was like, yeah, I'll just get all my relationships bars to a hundred percent, and then quit playing. I sense desperation <laughs> from Square personally, <laughs> uh, and with the long-winded motherfucking title of a game called Nakayama Miho. No, Toki Meki High School <laughs> that Nabu uh, would co score with Toshiaki Imai. Sorry about the names, guys. Every fucking time. In the last game, Nabu would score a sequel of sorts. Uh, in the last game, Nabu would score. A sequel of sorts to 3D World Runner would be that of JJ. But y'all want to get to the good stuff. I can feel it. Fine. His last effort of 1987 would be the soundtrack for Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. This now legendary soundtrack featured, featured both the arpeggio prelude and main theme that would be staples in the series to come. He remarked once that he felt kind of embarrassed as he hadn't worked all that hard on these pieces that would be hummed <laughs> by gamers around the world. This is one of the best songs in the game. Here's a cover for Matoya's theme.
Beginning in 1988, Nabuo would slow down his work to one to two games per year. He had done, in 1986 and 1987, he did a slew of little games. Yeah. And he, for the most part, with the exception, I think, two games, he worked on them entirely on his own, uh, which was insane. Uh, but yeah, from 1988 onward, just basically one to two games per year, uh, primarily being that uh, of the scores for the Final Fantasy games, which of course were Square's big, they, yeah, it was their big series. Their now, flagship. See, now that yeah. they're Square Enix, they have multiple big series that they're that they've kind of pushed. Yeah, but uh, Square, it was definitely Final Fantasy. Yeah. There's no question. It was Final Fantasy centric, very very much. Uh, occasionally, though, he would take a detour, uh, and uh, after Final Fantasy, his next track uh, would be from a game called Hanjuku. Hero. His other score of 1988 would be for the sequel to Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 2. What? Much of the original score from FF1 would make it into Final Fantasy 2 for our enjoyment, along with some original works. Here's a remix of Rebellion.
for some reason, Square thought it would be a really awesome idea to make a game based on the book Tom Sawyer. Uh, I have no idea if the game is any good. I just simply <laughs> found out about this game. Uh, but anyway, I like if someone were to pitch that to me, I'd be like, "No, let's." <laughs> How about Huck Finn? There's more adventure. Yeah. Like, I know there's, like, the painting of the fences in the cave in Tom Sawyer, but, like, come on. No. It's got to be Huckleberry Finn if you're going to pick a Mark Twain book. Yeah, especially to an RPG company. Like, make it the one that's an adventure that you go out and do stuff. Seriously, man. Then you can have uh, Jim, like... Yeah, it'd be a cool character. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But if there was someone who could make a killer soundtrack for such a game... It would be Uematsu for Squares, Tom Sawyer, in 1989. Ah, <laughs> uh, now I just fucking with this. So here's the real piece from the game. An effort from Naboo to make a soundtrack more, as he calls it, scenic. Yeah, whatever, of course, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, the one that we played instead, of course, was Rush's Tom Sawyer. <laughs> We don't have to listen to that anymore. The Final Fantasy Legend, or as it was originally called in Japan, Makai Toshi Saga. Or as we know it. The reason it's not counted as an (laughs) FF game in our podcast, because it wasn't originally called Final Fantasy. And of course it's the one I found and bought. Yeah, you were like, dude, I found an FF game. Like, sorry, man. And then I was like, wait. Oh, fuck. Sorry. It's not this one. Yeah. Your uh, your many failures at the used game store. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Uh, This... Uh, Maka, uh, whatever, the first Saga game would round <laughs> out uh, 1989 uh, with this Game Boy Classic and Square's first platinum hit at the time with 1.37 million copies sold. Uh, Nabuo remarked that he had difficulty coming up with the 16 tracks for the game because of the hardware limitations of the Game Boy, apparently. But despite this, the game would have a soundtrack considered as a classic for many of its fans. Uh, here is a remix of Battle with Creator.
Final Fantasy 3 would follow in 1990, and with this game came the fucking awesome piece, Crystal Tower. Check out this power metal remix. Considered one of the best racing games of the NES, Rad Racer 2 Ooh. would be yet another game graced with Uematsu's presence as his 11th game score. Here is a super upbeat cover of Gumble Crash titled Fire in the Tires. The second saga game, or Final Fantasy Legend 2, would come next, and would eventually be heralded as 97th 
of the greatest games of all time in a poll by Famitsu. It's not bad. We know how reliable Famitsu is. <laughs> For this game, Kenji Ito would assist in composition. Here's a piano cover of Save the World. Buo's first masterpiece, in my humble opinion, uh, would come on the SNES and would be his only game uh, that he works on of 1991. He's called the composing process for the game one of the hardest in his career. Staying up with the sound team deep into the night, the music would be so heralded that one of the tracks from the game would go on to be official music curriculum for Japanese school students. That's pretty hog status yeah, right there. there you go. That game would be Final Fantasy IV, and that song would be Theme of Love. <laughs>
And of course, I don't know how else we can consider ourselves fans of FF4 if we don't include Fabul's theme. My personal favorite from the game. Uematsu wouldn't write anything for romancing saga, which are kind of the next things he would work on. Uh, he, although for it and its sequel, he would assist with the arrangement, I guess. Uh, his next mega work would be Final Fantasy V. FF5 would require Uematsu to create over 56 tracks. A favorite of the game being the song Dear Friends, which Nabuo has performed on countless occasions. So uh, let's take a listen.
The next track is featured during the fight with one of the series' most beloved opponents, Gilgamesh. Here's a cover of Clash on the Big Bridge. could legitimately make one of these entire episodes about Final Fantasy VI, right? Uh, But we're going to go ahead with two big tracks from that masterpiece of a game score. Here's an amazing metal cover of Dancing Mad.
And to round things off for Final Fantasy VI, a favorite of both of ours and quite possibly the best piece that he's ever released, I think, anyway. Yes. Terra's theme. Join us next week for part two, guys, and sit back and enjoy this mega hit. <laughs> <laughs>